Welcome to Numerical Methods. And yeah, I'd like to start a new chapter. <clears throat> so my next chapter is the Monte Carlo method. And really the Monte Carlo method is a nice and very important method. And what's so special about this? So the first thing is that it is very, very versatile. Now used in many areas and maybe also a very nice thing is that it is really simple. And as a mathematician, you might think, okay, it is so simple. So how can that be something that is superior to something else? So for example, the simple also means that it is easy to implement. The special thing about the Monte Carlo method is that it can cope with problems in high dimension. And we will have a nice example looking at integration methods, integration in high dimensions. And that's really the point that is so special about this. Yeah, okay, so maybe these are all good things. So maybe I should make the second one also green or in a, let's use a light green, because now comes something that is maybe a disadvantage. Some results hold only in probability. Okay, so we will see on our course to introducing this method, we will see this issue several times, but there will be a surprising turn at a certain point when we move from pseudo random numbers to quasi random numbers that you can actually also get rid of this probabilistic thing. Yeah, don't, don't, don't maybe be disappointed by this at first. Yeah, we will, we will come to this later. So one thing I really like to do in the lecture is to give you an intuition, what is the method doing? Yeah, so that you have a feeling what's going on. And I would really like to start with a very simple, maybe a somewhat trivial introduction. So I would like to calculate the expectation of a random variable and in the application of risk neutral valuation. So that is something in mathematical finance, which we have to do very often. So we would like to calculate uh, an expectation of some random variable. So here I consider the case of a discrete, yeah, so maybe a trivial case, discrete random variable Z defined over a space, a finite dimensional space, omega one to omega n. So my Omegas have certain probabilities. So these here are the probabilities. And then my random variable has certain values for these omegas. And then my expectation is just the sum of the value multiplied with the probabilities over all those elementary events. So I can calculate here this expectation, just summing up Z of omega i times P of omega i. I can approximate the probability with an algorithm that actually at first looks quite useless. So what I could do is assume I have a sequence xk of independent drawings. So I will come back to the word drawings, but maybe you have an intuition for what's, what's that. It's just a sequence here of independent drawings. So I have a sequence of such omegas. So it's an infinite sequence, xk, k in n, and xk is in the set from omega one to omega n. And the drawings should be according to the probability. So this means that every event omega i occurs 
at the probability P of omega I. So what does that mean? So it means if you observe the sequence and you count, how often does the omega say I occur? I is now a fixed value. Then you count as many omega I's as approximately the probability multiplied with the number of omegas that have occurred up to this point. So that means if you calculate the running average, yeah, so like calculating a running sum, we now calculate here the running average. One divided by M, observe the first M elements and count whenever omega I occurred, then this will converge if M goes to infinity to the probability. So I assume I have such a sequence, then I can use this guy here to approximate the probability. So that guy here can be used to approximate the probability. So this uh, partial sum is uh, surely a fairly simply simple, and maybe it's a totally inefficient and useless method to approximate the probability. Uh, if you like to have an example, just consider say a dice. Yeah, you are throwing the dice. Well, we know the dice has one over six as the probability. So I can just observe maybe the sequence sequence of elements in one, two, six. So for example, I can observe such a sequence and I can just count how many times do I observe the value. So if, for example, the omega i here is just the one, yeah, then I observe it here and I observe it here. So if I count here, I have observed two so it's one, my approximation is one half. Okay, that's maybe not a good approximation. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so here it's two divided by nine. Yeah, maybe it's already a better approximation. Okay, so you can approximate the um, probability. Let's um, have a look how this would be look in a graph. I have prepared here a small program, so I do not want to do this live. It's not so, so such a big thing, yeah? So I just calculate here this running average you just saw on the slide, yeah? So um, here comes my omega as an argument, and then I have the running sum, the SM for my capital M, so how many guys I would try to sum. Okay, and then comes here my random drawing. So there is some guy that generates here random drawings. I have a certain seed, so I can generate different sequences, but maybe you just don't care about this here. And you just take it as a black box that this year will generate a sequence of independent drawings from the numbers one to six. So if you go to this here, you see that this here returns a, a random number uniformly distributed between zero inclusive and the value specified exclusive. So this here will be between zero and five. So I add a one and this is between one and six. Then I have my indicator function. If this drawing was equal to omega, I count the one, otherwise it's zero. Then I count this in my sum. And then my running average is the sum divided by the numbers that I have added. Okay, since I start counting here in zero, this is an i plus one. Okay, and then I just print here a list of these guys. Okay, so if I run this. Okay. So you see uh, here, what I'm doing here is I take the omega equal to three. So I check whenever is omega equal to three. Yeah. So here I count a one. This is my indicator function. Then here I also count a one. Yeah? And you see here I have simulated two values. So it's one half. Here I have simulated 
10 values. So it's two over 10, it's 0 0.2. And you see that I get approximations of this probability. Well, and sometimes I hit even the right value. The right value would be one over six, yeah, which is here. Yeah, so uh, sometimes I get the right value, but then I also deviate from that. Um, this program here, which, which I have here is also creating some plot. Yeah, I do not have to bother about this plot. So if you run that program, you also get a plot and this is how it looks like. Yeah? So whenever this guy is jumping up, I get another one in the ind indicator function, but the size of the jump is becoming smaller because I add one times one divided by n. So this is our little uh, toy um, example. So the jump here, whenever we jump up, this means we add one divided by n to the sum. Yeah, so we, or to the, let's say to the average. Or maybe let's do it precise. We add one divided by n to n minus one divided by n times the previous average. Okay, so you see the average is always scaled down here yeah, with this factor. If I get more guys and sometimes I jump up if I have one divided by n. Okay, and you can also let this run. Yeah, you see the true value here is the one divided by six. Okay, so which is actually here this blue value. And we are uh, somewhat converging to this value. If you let this run over multiple values, yeah, you see here the red line is one possible sequence. The green line is another sequence. So I count a one, yeah, so I have one divided by two. Then I get no additional value. And then at the 10, there was another one. So I jump up yeah, and now I have a two divided by 10 yeah, and I go down again and I jump up again, okay. And if you let this run, yeah, you see that there is some convergence. Okay, well, that's a very uh, strange way to approximate the probability. Uh, even stranger because uh, in order to create the approximation, I have to know the probability. Yeah? That's a bit strange. Okay, so appears a bit useless. So what can we do with this? Okay, if you if you let this run, you will see that they will they will converge. So the queen one is a different sequence. Sometimes they also deviate again. Yeah, uh, the queen one was a little bit far away. Yeah, but if you have many such sequences, they will all nicely approach the blue line. So what can we do with this? strange approximation. Okay, I call this here number two. And if I have this, that I approximate the probability of omega i with this sequence of the indicator function, then we find the following result. So my number two is here. And let's read this from right to left. So I can approximate, well, I do not know how good the approximation is. I can somewhat approximate in the sense that I have convergence, but we have to investigate later in what sense we have convergence. I can approximate this probability with this running sum of indicator functions, indicator function xk equals omega i, xk is my sequence, omega i is the event for which I approximate the probability. If that is the approximation for the probability, I just multiply here with the value set of omega i. And if I now take the sum over 
i, I get the expectation. So that's the z of omega i. So now you can move the set inside this sum. Yeah, so just move the set here inside. So you have that going now from right to left. This is set of omega i multiplied with the indicator function xk is equal to omega i summed over all k's divided by m. Yeah, and now you have another nice thing. Um, if I know that xk is equal to omega i, so this is one, then actually that here is the same as z of xk. And if xk is not equal omega i, the whole guy here is zero. So it doesn't matter if I replace this here with xk. So actually I can use that z of omega i times indicator xk equals omega i is the same as z of xk times indicator. So I can use that. And now you see that you have z of xk here inside times indicator xk is equal to omega i summed over all k divided by n. So what I now do is take the sum over all i. So if I take the sum over all i, I can move that sum here inside yeah? because all this stuff here does not depend on i anymore. Yeah? On the right-hand side, this stuff here depends on i but here this stuff does not depend on i. So if I take the sum over all i, this one here is just a one. So this will become a one. And I take the sum over all i on this whole expression on the right-hand side, I just have my expectation. Okay, so you see there is actually here this multiplied with one. Yeah? So this one is there. So you see that now I have a very nice result. I can approximate the expectation by taking the sum of z of xk, where xk is a sequence that is generated according to the probability. So I have the z here, but now the probability information, which was here in this product, is encoded in this sequence. Yeah, so that was my sequence. So in other words, the expression on the left-hand side might now serve as an approximation of the expectation. Hmm. Is this useful? Okay, so in this form here, you take the sum over all events. Well, here I take the sum over M elements from my sequence. Now, this here is the exact expectation. This here is just converging to it. So this is now our Monte Carlo um, approximation. So the guy on the left-hand side is now our Monte Carlo approximation. So we have that we can take the sum one divided by m, z evaluated in xk to approximate here this expectation. So the first thing which is nice is since xk is generated according to the probability, this means that important values of z of xk occur more often in the sum. Okay, is this nice? Well, actually it's inefficient. If you would say that you have your experiment with the dice, yeah, and there's maybe one guy that occurs more often, it just means that you count the six more 
more often in the in in the sum. Well, that looks a little bit inefficient because the probability is doing that for you. Yeah, the probability is just multiplying the values that occur more often with a larger number. So that may look inefficient at first, but now consider the following case: the number of events. Yeah, in my in my in my dice, it was just six events. This can be very large. Actually, it can be huge. But the number of elements from the sequence that is counting the important events more often or more likely, more likely is even better, that I need to approximate the expectation could be much smaller. So the number of calculations M required to achieve a specific level of approximation is possibly much smaller than the N. So my example was from a very small space with a very long sequence, but uh, the usual application is exactly the other way around. We could use a not so large sequence, maybe 10 million numbers on a huge space yeah, where, where the N, the space of the omegas is really huge, yeah? even uh, in infinite. And a second part is nice for me as a programmer I'm, I'm maybe a programmer, I can easily separate the, the probability part. So the probability part, which I always indicated with a blue, the generation of the drawings, so which models the P, from the evaluation of the random variable, which is the set. So I can easily separate this in the implementation. And in our application, for example, valuation of financial derivative, the function that is often associated with the financial product. How much do you pay in which scenario? And the sequence is associated with the model. So what, what are the possible values of your underlying quantity. And that's actually already the Monte Carlo method. Yeah? So that we approximate now the expectation with such a sum. We just need now to discuss a little bit how do we generate this sequence and in which sense are we actually here converge, converging? So in which sense are we converging to this? So what we need to derive in one of the next sessions are convergence result. We will also get a convergence rate in probability. And then in one of the later sessions, we will discuss how we generate the sequence. We can extend this to the continuous random variable. So where the space is not a discrete space, not a finite space of omegas. Um, and uh, also to stochastic processes, but we will do that later. Yeah, that was my little introduction. So giving you the intuition for the Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, what I will do in the next session is discuss two also quite trivial aspects. So actually, what is a drawing? Yeah. So you maybe have an in intuition for what is a drawing, but how is a drawing modeled? And then also how is the relation to vectors of random variables? Because I mentioned that the Monte Carlo method is especially powerful in high dimension. So we have to discuss a little bit how random variables and vectors of random variables relate. Also two very simple uh, sections. We go through this quickly but very good for the intuition and I believe also, also important. And then we will move to convergence results. That was it for this small intro. Thanks. <laughs>